Um, hi everyone, um, I'm Shane Porter, the Skills Development Manager for Regeneration 2031, which is part of the Creative Estuary Project and sits within the University of Kent's Institute of Culture and Creative Industries. This week we're hosting a series of panel discussions on their creative careers. In today's session, we're putting the spotlight on the music industry. Uh, we are really pleased to be joined today by a brilliant panel of people working in this industry in a wide range of different job roles. Uh, we're going to hear from them to get an insight into what their job involves, how they get got into their career, and their top tips for anyone wishing to pursue a career within this industry. Firstly, I'd like to ask the panelists to introduce themselves with their name, their job title, and the organisation that they're associated with. It's okay for you, Steph, to go first, please. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name's Steph Dickinson, and I'm the managing director of Pie Factory Music. We're a music charity based in Ramsgate and working across East Kent. Excellent. Thank you, Steph. Fraser, is that okay for you now, please? Hi there. My name is Fraser. Uh, I'm a freelance sound artist and instrument designer and also the director of Clip Sound and Music. We're a social enterprise in North Essex running music education projects. Excellent. Thank you, Fraser. And over to you, Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Watts and I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm a freelance choir leader and workshop facilitator and I also work part-time for a music charity called Music for Change. Excellent, thank you. And over to you, Jimmy. Hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm founder of um, G-Town Talents. It's a youth music organisation. We opened it in 2019 and it's also a talent agency that like, given hope to um, musicians in Kent, especially rappers. And Anna, over to you, please, to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Anna Neal. I'm an artist, uh, songwriting composer. I'm also a lecturer at the University of Kent in Music Business Production, and I'm on the Songwriter and Equality Committees at the Ivers Academy. Great, thank you. And finally, Elijah. You're on mute, Elijah. Apologies. Hi, I'm Elijah. My artist name is Elijah Femi. I'm a... I've been part of a lot of organisations, including Pi Factory, Art 31, Wide for Music Sound Connections, and really my job is um, artist and producer. No, thank you very much, everyone, for that. So we'll go straight into our first question. What does a typical day in your job look like? I'm sure every day can be different. But just give us an idea of what a day in the life of you and your role looks like. So we'll go back into the same order, please, and we'll start off with Steph. Yeah, so my, my job's quite varied and obviously in these times it's even more strange um, than usual, but really my role is about keeping an eye on the health of our organisation. So from things to finance and fundraising to also how like the well-being of our team and how our team is doing um, and then also so really keeping an eye on are we meeting the needs of young people and are we really hearing their voices um, so it's kind of a mixture of dreaming about what could be and then putting plans into action to actually make stuff happen um, and in normal times I'd be making a bit of coffee for friends and, and colleagues but that's something I actually miss isn't that sad making coffee for people. <laughs> no, excellent thank you Steph and um, over to you please Fraser. Um, yeah so my day um normally starts off with I'm a bit of a slave to my calendar um, and I really try hard to block out my day ahead um, I am I, I'm a great procrastinator like professional procrastinator so really blocking out my day and listing all the tasks I need to get done prioritizing them that's normally the first thing I do is just sort of check what do I need to get done today and that can range from like setting up meetings attending meetings um, but also things like working on an application, maybe building something, doing some soldering, some circuitry, um, or composing um, either to a brief or for my own purposes as well. So, so fairly varied. Excellent. Thank you, Fraser. And then Emily. Hi. Yes, obviously I do quite a few roles um, of things that are kind of similar. So um, firstly, there's a lot of communication that could be talking to artists, musicians, songwriters, producers, people in the community. And then a lot of planning, um, thinking ahead for events, drawing up schedules, contracts, planning workshops, writing funding bids, also a bit of marketing action, you know, social media, writing press releases. And then finally, my favourite is actually being creative. So facilitating workshops, writing demo in tracks and things like that. Oh, excellent. That sounds great. Thank you, Emily. And over to you, Jimmy. Yeah. Um... 
my day I'm like answering emails, I'm networking with organisations. I'm always finding ways to elevate um, the urban music scene and talents in Kent. I'm always working with different creators and producers, seeing how they can help. But the most important thing is that we have a platform, a powerful platform, Instagram and Facebook, and making sure that we keep the audience entertained. That's so important. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. And Anna, over to you. So again, mine's quite varied. There is a lot of admin. Um, so obviously some days I'm lecturing, some days I'm prepping that, some days I've got composition um, commissions that I have to complete. So I'm not a morning person, but to be quite strict with myself to make myself come down here at nine o'clock and actually switch the studio on and work. Um, but it's really important to break your day up. Um, and I try and get the stuff that I don't like done out of the way first. So the paperwork, the admin, the marketing, all the, all the kind of boring business bits if you like that have to be done um, so that I can do the creative stuff and, and networking is an important part of that as well so talking to people all the time and I know it's hard at the moment but there's there are always opportunities so looking for those opportunities is something that I spend a lot of my day doing as well. No that's excellent thank you and lastly Elijah. Uh, a typical day for me is really based on um, personal development so a lot of the time I'll be writing songs going to studio and just thinking about new projects to like indulging and ideas also emails but right now it's a lot of zoom meetings which I, i'm enjoying at the moment <laughs> all right excellent thank you very much and thank you all for that and so yes our second question is um next it'd be great to hear about your career pathways how did you get into your current role in the industry as a, as a whole really and we're, we're going at the same order so if i could start with steph please yeah sure so I actually started, um, I was a participant at Pie Factory Music in my, oh, I feel like a snowball just really, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's all right, we're all safe. Um, yeah, I started as a participant of Pie Factory Music. So I got free guitar lessons um, at about the age of 13 or 14. And it was really important for me because I couldn't really afford private music lessons. Um, and that's kind of the story of really how Pie Factory developed. But after becoming um, a participant, I then um, was taken on by PIFE to become like a trainee workshop leader. So I shadowed a lot of creative practitioners um, and then became more of a music practitioner myself. Um, so led workshops in songwriting and vocal technique. Um, and then I got more into the freelance project management side of things. So I became more interested in actually putting on longer term projects and learning about how to plan for that, how to evaluate impact and things. And then that led me on to become um, the program manager at Pi when a vacancy opened up. And then seven years ago, um, I became managing director of Pi. So my journey is quite, quite um, intertwined with, with us as a charity. But I think it, for me, it really shows that actually it's not just about formal education. If you can get around creative people and just keep asking questions and put, you know, like put yourself forward for stuff, that's also a really great pathway. Oh, that's excellent so really interesting thank you for that um over to you Fraser please yeah um I really like what Steph was saying that kind of learn by doing I think that's definitely something I've I've tried to like approach a lot instilled in me from my parents from a young age so um always picking up work experience so at 16 I managed to somehow managed to get some experience at Fred B Media at the BBC um when I was literally putting like cassettes into the wall to like get the idents on which seems like yeah ancient now um, but I started music tech at university um, and that's sort of like one of the first things I did was after university was um, doing karaoke backing tracks uh, on Spotify like when that first launched um, which was a really good exercise in like having to play every instrument and trying to write to a brief really quickly to a short you know short timeline um, and but yeah just picking up lots of different experience so I kind of got involved in um, music for video games I started volunteering at an art gallery and picked up lots of skills as an educator because that kind of that became a really good way of earning money as well um, uh, because it's hard to find like composition jobs if you're trying to score for films if you don't live in London if you're not able to network in the same way so so yeah kind of like volunteering in different places um, networking lots and kind of building that network which has allowed me to kind of blur all these different roles together as like um, educator facilitator creative um, and like you know program manager or producer. Excellent, thank you for that, Fraser. And um, over to you, please, Emily. Hi, yeah, quite similar to um, Steph and Fraser, always um, taking up opportunities in music um, when I was younger, whether that was like kind of formal lessons, but then 
we'll set up volunteering um, for different arts organisations and things like that. Um, and then when it came to formal education, I did um, a degree in drama and theatre studies actually at Kent University. Um, and that gave me, the final year was a master's in um, creative producing, promoting and managing theatre. So that actually gave me a lot of the crossover skills that I use now in regards to writing funding bids, contracts, planning, all that kind of admin side that, um, that actually I now carry through as an independent artist as well. Um, so then as part of that, that gave me the skills to work at the Golbenkian Theatre as a marketing assistant for a few years. And then I um, saw the job at Music for Change because music's always been in my heart. That is my first. Um, and I realised, even though I loved all the arts, music really is where my heart is. So I went for the job at Music for Change, got that and actually made a decision to go part time with my more formal like day job so that I could build my freelance career um, and on the side. So I do all the singing, songwriting, um, I put on events and programmed festivals. And then again, the drama and the music has combined for me to be able to now facilitate workshops and choirs and things like that. Oh, that's excellent, no, thank you for that. And um, over to you please, Jimmy. Yeah, my one's actually like, and there's that like, lack of opportunities and all that. Like, I have many friends in the music industry and I was like, I need to be part of that. So I joined a film company called Molly Films in 2014, started getting experience about the industry. And then I came back to Kent and realized there's nothing here. And I was like, something needs to happen. So I said, let's create G-Town Talents at the urban platform for the youth. And it just really went well, you know? And with my experiences that I know from the music industry, I've just put it all into there and it's just going well. Like everyone came together as a platform and I've got a duty to make sure Kent goes up in the urban scene. That's great, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. And um, over to you please, Anna. I uh, picked up the guitar at 14 and decided I wanted to be a rock star and that was it basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a band, I put a band together. I've always been quite goal orientated and a bit like a bloodhound. Um, I My first professional experience was quite a lucky break in that I started singing in the touring band for the film The Commitments when I was 18 and blonde and very naive. But that was my first professional experience. I did a music degree and rediscovered my love of, sort of songwriting from there and decided, no, I was going to be a rock and roll singer songwriter. Um, pursued that for Oh, about 15 years, I'd say. Um, I went to, I applied for all the funding with the music industry. I'd go to every single industry event. I played at South by Southwest. I made some good connections in Canada. Uh, I basically kind of hopped from one industry conference to another. And that was because I was able to get hold of UK trade and investment funding and funding from music industry bodies that allowed me to do that. Otherwise there's no way I would have been able to do that. And you get to a point where you then start to diversify, you know, if, you, if you're a singer and a songwriter, you then go into composing radio jingles, which is what I do. And you go into composing for classical organisations and maybe you go into production. So producing for other people and you just start to spider off your different skills from there. And I, I like what Fraser says about having to learn to play every instrument. That's that's a given. You do have to learn to play every instrument or learn how to edit it well. Um, and then part of that also feeds back into education. So I, I feel that I've been quite lucky with some of the stuff that I've been able to do. A lot of it is hard work. A lot of it is networking. And there's a lot of imposter syndrome involved as well. Um, which is quite hard to manage, but I feel like I'm at a point now where I wanna make it better for other people. So that's why I'm now involved in music industry body. So I campaign on behalf of the Musicians Union and the Ivers Academy to try and make it better for, you know, underrepresented um, areas of society that don't get a chance to make music um, so we can diversify this wonderful area that we work in and also to educate as well so you know be able to work with students in recording studios and production and they're what they're learning and I can teach them my skills it is great it's an honour really um, yeah that's pretty much it well, thank you that's great and then um, over to you please Elijah so my journey started in secondary school like most young musicians I played in a band, we played at O2 Academy in Leicester, and that was great. And I, I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. I've always liked making music. So then I moved to Kent, um, Margate to be precise, but and then everything just kind of seemed like shot. So there was no opportunities. I was like, how can I carry on? And I was at college studying science, so I didn't have any, any opportunities to go to the studio at college. So I searched and then I found Pie Factory, which seemed so, um, it didn't seem true to be honest, because 
the studio was free. The studio was so expensive at that time and still is, to be honest. But I was like, whoa, this is not real. Then I, I went to Pi. Actually, Steph was the first person I met at Pi and we talked. And from then, I've just been involved with Pi Factory and they gave me opportunities and learned, I learned how to operate in the studio, how to create events. Then I got involved with Art 31 as well, created loads of events uh, with Art 31. And I moved to London more recently, joined YF Music London and also Sound Connections, which is the role that I'm doing right now, as long as my, as well as my music. Um, Staring advisor for Sound Connections um, to making music education more inclusive to young people of different background and ethnicity. So, yeah, and also now I'm able to create my own record label called Pioneers Kent. I, I feel like the most, what I've learned a lot from what I've, um, how I started into this journey is networking and being close with organizations. So if anything, it would just be like, yeah, just being able to network with people, um, with different organizations. No, that's excellent. No, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for that. So um, just moving on to finally to our last question. What would you what would be your top tip for someone wanting to pursue a career in this industry or within your line of work, really? And, and, and just yeah, to give us a little bit more information about that, please. And can we start this step? Yeah, sure. I think my three top tips would be number one to be your authentic self it's taken me a little while to sort of figure that out and I think I spent a lot of, especially in moving into more of a leadership role I spent a lot of time thinking I need to be like leaders that I've seen and I kind of messed myself up a bit trying to be what I wasn't so I think stay authentic to who you are um, is really important and if you're not sure who you are creativity is a great way to explore that like use that to find out who you really are and what really your values are um, I'd say number two to commit to being a learner for life and never to kind of get into the trap that you think you've made it um, and to see every person that you interact with as someone who is worth listening to and worth learning from um, I think that's that's a really good thing to kind of get into the habit of and then finally I'd say to never um, stop developing your own creative practice. So even though my role now hasn't really got anything to do with songwriting, I still do that separately because that is like the fuel to the fire of everything else, like your own creativity. So wherever you land, keep being creative and exploring and um, yeah, just keep going. That's great. Thank you, Steph. And, and over to you, please, Fraser. Um, uh, I think my two um, bits of advice would be uh, achievable goals would be the first one so um again like Steph um sorry like Anna said earlier um a bit of a sucker for, for a deadline um, and for a target um but if I can kind of give myself an achievable goal achievable being the key word it's something to work towards um and then trying to find uh, me personally I've like I managed to find ways that I can hold myself accountable so that might be like posting something online I've said it now I'm gonna have to do it um, because it can be me personally again I find it sometimes really hard to prioritize my own work my own creative practice when I'm also say working for other people um, and that's quite a familiar story especially if you're starting out in any kind of creative industry you might find that you have a job working for someone else whilst also trying to develop your own skills at the same time so don't forget to prioritize yourself because like Steph was saying you know, your own creative practice is the fuel for that fire it's really important to kind of know why you want to do it um, you know and, and keep making work um, and the other one is there's this amazing video by an American um, radio presenter called Ira Glass. And he talks about something called um, you have uh, artists have like really good taste and they know what's really, really good. But sometimes their talent isn't there at the beginning. And it's only by just making a sheer huge body of work, just finishing things and growing is that your talent will meet your taste and it'll catch up with it. So most people kind of give up before I say most some people give up before they get there. Um, but the people we see, the successful artists, are the one who persevere and you know, and just continue to make work, uh, so that which eventually catches up, catches up with their with their taste level. So it's it's completely normal to hate things that you create, <laughs> basically. Um, but the more you do it, the better you get, um, and you understand what you like and how to make it as well. So yeah, just keep making things. No, that's great. Thank you, Fraser. And um, over to you, please, Emily. These are great tips already. Um, so yeah, my three are number one, network. Um, you know, go to various networking events, conferences. Um, there's so many music industry conferences that go on, um, even online. Um, so yeah, just network, speak to anyone 
know when and work opportunity might come through from that. Um, number two is be yourself. Um, you have something unique to offer and just yeah, be yourself as Steph was saying as well. And then number three, um, always schedule in time at least a day a week to rest and switch off. Um, because in a freelance career, it's very easy to say yes to everything. And before you know it, you've overcommitted and you can experience burnout. Um, so yeah, just take some time to switch off. That's great, thank you, Emily. And um, over to you, please, Jimmy. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> yeah, um, the music, like, make sure you have enjoyment and ownership. The music audience would, like, the world loves, they love to know, like, your artist experiences through making music and creating your ideas into reality. My other advice is make sure you have hope, keep going, make sure you find a team and a family that really believe in what you're doing to help push your artistry, because it's really difficult to do it alone. Um, get loads of people to spread your work as well, show it to other people, because marketing is really important. And um, don't look at other artists and fool you, you have to be like them to be successful. Believe in your own talents. And the final one is the top musicians keep recording and finding ways to make it work. So don't give up. And if you need advice on further steps, find people that can help you. No, that's great. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, and over to you, please, Anna. <laughs> Number one, get educated. If you don't know what a publishing deal is, find out. If you don't know what a record deal is, find out. Number two, join your tribe. If you need help, join the MU, join the Artist Academy, join the MPG, join these organisations, go to their networking events, meet the people, talk to the people. It doesn't matter what you say, just find something interesting to say about yourself. Make sure you've got good product, make sure you've got a good website, you've got you know decent music up on SoundCloud or something that you're proud of. Um, and number three, keep the faith. Remember that no one in music just does one thing now. Everyone has a portfolio career. They do multiple things. Some people even do things outside of music while doing music. And that is the norm now, no matter what anyone says. It's only the top 0.4% who get to the Ed Sheeran stage. You know, if you're in this, you're in this for the long haul. So be aware that you will chop and change and you'll have to learn new things. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. And then finally, over to you, Elijah. My first tip would be be involved. Um, be open to opportunities around you. Doesn't have to be exactly making music. It could be music organization, music education. Just be involved, and that's how you get a lot of opportunities. Especially being from a place like Kent at that time when it was so difficult to like um, have a longevity in music um, because it was deprived from the opportunities like a place like London would be um, would have. But being involved helped me out. So I would say, yeah, definitely network. Be involved. Secondly, be yourself. It's great to be able to adapt to the times, to what music sounds like right now, but also what is unique about you is what helps you with being able to like have a long lasting career. Um, be decisive when needed. Um, it's good to be able to balance your idea with other people and collaborate with other people and meet each other in the middle ground. But at the end of the day, your brand is your music and you, it's your face, it's your name. So if you don't feel comfortable about something, don't do it. Be decisive if I need it. Okay. Thank you all for, for, for all your answers and questions. And thank you very much to all our panellists. That's been um, really interesting. And um, thanks for everyone uh, for watching this too. And I hope it's helped give an insight in just a few of the many possible careers within, the, within this industry. If you have any comments or questions about anything we've discussed, don't hesitate to get in touch. You can email um, icci at kent.ac.uk or info at creativeestry.com. Uh, connect us uh, with us on Twitter and so that will be at, at UniKent ICCI and also at Creative Estuary as well. Um, thank you all uh, very much for watching and um, bye from everyone here. So thank you.